Hi, this is Dave Farina from CosmosSafari.com. You may have been seeing in a lot of the forums lately that people have been talking about the star Betelgeuse. For those of you who don't know about the star Betelgeuse, it's a supergiant star, a red supergiant, that's located in the constellation of Orion, and it is currently undergoing a rapid state of dimming and scientists around the world are kind of wondering what is going on. So basically this star is a known variable star and over the last 180 years or so we have been studying with rather great detail the periodicity of its variation. In other words it's getting brighter and dimmer, brighter and dimmer, and it does that over the period of uh, many days. Um, and it undergoes three main cycles that we are aware of, and I'll put some links in the description below. But basically, this star is kind of going outside of its norm. It's, it's going to a new dimmest level that we've never seen before. And scientists are starting to wonder, is this something different? Is this something new? And some people are even saying, is it possible that this star could go supernova, which is uh, in a very large star like Betelgeuse, it's the end of its life. It explodes um, and it basically annihilates itself. And in the background, you can see uh, on my computer screen here, I have a picture of M1, which is the Crab Nebula. Now, just so you know, I'll be producing a video about how to find the Crab Nebula in the next week or so. Um, M1 was a star and in 1054 AD M1 exploded and is now the supernova remnant that we see today. And we only know this because ancient astronomers, uh, ancient Chinese astronomers, wrote it down. In fact, it was so bright that for about two weeks the ancient Chinese were able to see uh, this supernova in the daytime sky and it was approximately the same brightness as the full moon. So if Betelgeuse were to go supernova, it's going to be as bright as the full moon and it's going to be coming from one little tiny point in the sky so uh, the surface brightness of that point will be significantly brighter than the moon itself and of course you can see the moon in the daytime, you'll definitely be able to see this in the daytime if it coincides when uh, Orion is in the daytime sky. Currently it's in the nighttime sky. Uh, me personally, um, and my friends uh, who are also astrophotographers, I would love for it to go off in the middle of the night um, and to be up in our nighttime sky because that means we could image it. And if we could image this event uh, occurring, we've got lots of people who are uh, extremely excited about the fact that it's dimming. They've already been taking images. Maybe you would like to too. I also want to take a moment right now to plug some of the future uh, kind of direction that I'm going to be taking this channel in, which is to do science with our astrophotography. There's a lot of us who are, um, myself included, uh, enjoying the process of uh, doing astrophotography, taking an image, processing it, and making a pretty looking picture. The reality of what scientists do with astrophotography and what amateur astronomy currently is doing with astrophotography uh, are kind of at odds with each other. And I would like to see this hobby uh, lean a little bit more towards the scientific side of things. And that's what I'm going to make uh, some of my content here on the channel about is just how to take uh, our data that we're getting and bring it to the point that uh, we can actually do some science with it. And I'll be learning that with you, to be quite frank. Um, I'm in the process of, of learning this through my, my regular employment. Um, and I will be taking you on a journey with me as I learn these techniques. Uh, I want to record them for my own uh, kind of archiving so that if I forget how to do something, uh, I can come back to my own videos. Uh, and I hope to kind of bring you this process as well on how to take your data, crunch that data, and learn something scientific about it. So if you like this type of video, if you want to learn more about what's currently going on in the world of astronomy, uh, or if you'd like to learn more about 
uh, the scientific aspects of astrophotography. You might already have some gear, maybe you don't, that's fine. Um, but if you do have gear and you would like to learn about how can I utilize this uh, very expensive equipment and utilize it in more ways than just getting a simple picture out of it in the end. Um, so please, uh, if you're interested, subscribe to the channel and uh, click the like button at the bottom. If you have any interest in uh, Beetlejuice and you've got images of it already, uh, or if you have any information on it, please put it in the comments below because uh, I'm kind of busy in my everyday life and I can't keep up. So, um, you know, if you're if you're finding things, you know, just put them in that comments below. I'd love to read about uh, what you're finding out about this. I know it's it's kind of rapidly evolving. So, please, uh, once again subscribe to the channel and I'd like that hit that like button for me.